Welcome to NinjaCast, a photography podcast powered by Studio Ninja, the world's highest rated business management app built specifically for photographers. Listen and learn as the most successful photographers on the planet share their knowledge to help you transform every element of your photography business. Here's your host, Sally Shaw. Hi guys, welcome to NinjaCast. Today I'm joined by the lovely Bernie Griffiths. Now Bernie used to be a photographer and then he transitioned into coaching and marketing with photographers themselves. Now Bernie is the loveliest guy and he has so much knowledge from 40 plus years in the industry. It's all he's ever known in his career is photography and the industry surrounding it. So I'm really excited to dig into that knowledge base with him and find out as many hints and tips as we can. Let's get started. Hi Bernie, how are you? I'm great, thanks, Sally. How are you? Yeah, I'm really, really well, thank you. I'm excited to talk to you today. I think this is going to be a really good one. I hope so. We'll see what value we can give to the listeners. Hey? Absolutely. I'm sure there will be absolutely loads. <laughs> so, yeah. Bernie, tell us a little bit about you, a little introduction to you and your career. Yeah, well, it's been a long time. Um, I might mention the odd date, but I look a lot younger than my age <laughs> as might suggest. Um, so basically, I've always been a, in the photography industry. I've never done anything else. Mm -hmm. So I'm one of those rare people that uh, left school at 15 years old and worked in a processing and printing uh, place where we, I did the film processing and worked on the enlarger and that. Oh, wow. And, uh, worked there for a few years in England, in Shropshire, mm -hmm. and then from there, um, I wanted to travel the world and be a successful photographer. So I was very fortunate a few years later and um, to get a job on a p lines on a cruise ship as a photographer. Lovely. So after uh, just a very short two-week uh, cruise around the Mediterranean, I got a message to say that they wanted me to join the world cruise. So I set off uh, from Southampton and we went to uh, the west coast of America, to uh, Sydney, Melbourne, Japan, Hong Kong, Vancouver, Hawaii, all around. And uh, I saw Australia. And after doing uh, three trips around the world, I decided that I want to emigrate. So I emigrated to Australia and within six months uh, bought my own studio. Wow, what a whirlwind. Yeah, it was great. I learned uh, my alcoholic habits there <laughs> um, and uh, it was great. So we were photographing passengers and then we had to sell them the following day. So we had a counter and we had to print them all. Uh, it was five by seven uh, prints, black and white. Mm -hmm. And then um, the last trip, they put in a colour they're putting colour, but it was all dip and dunk. It was all done by hand. There was mm. nothing. There's no machinery to do colour. So it was all with a colour enlarger and using filters. And so we really started, uh, yeah, it's hard to believe that uh, when I started, there was no colour. Yeah, you've seen the whole transformation, right? I have. I certainly have. I've seen it all. Um so from there, I saw Australia, decided to emigrate, set a goal to have a studio. As I said, within six months, I bought one mm -hmm. and uh, learned uh, a lot uh, from that experience early on because one thing I learned was it wasn't as easy as I thought. Mm -hmm. People weren't queuing up outside of the door mm -hmm. and quite regularly I'd run to the bank uh, seven days late to pay the rent. Mm -hmm. And uh, something inside of me said, Bernie, you've got to do something about this situation. Uh, besides sleeping on, on uh, uh, just the floor at the time after I emigrated. Really? Um, so um, I learned marketing and I learned it very well and built that studio up, which I had for 40 odd years and had a staff. And, and we did weddings and portraits and we did lots of them. Um, and it was great. And it, it was my life and I've never done anything else except be an entrepreneur and have my own business. Wow, that's an incredible so I, journey, isn't it? So I sink or swim by the decisions I make, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I mean, there's, there's so many photographers out there um, 
but I guess, you know, in our industry in general, videographers, you know, um, creatives in general, we kind of come from knowing something else quite often. Yes, so come from yes. full-time employment or, you know, I think that's more instilled into people nowadays, isn't it? You leave school, you get your education, you get a full-time job. So yeah. I think it's rare to hear from somebody that actually, no, you've done this your entire life. This is all, yeah. you, all you've ever known. Totally, and in the same industry, in the wedding portrait industry, mm. and now specifically in portraits with my coaching. So after sort of uh, uh, during my time of, of having that studio, I did a lot of seminars. We started the Australian School of Wedding and Portrait Photography, and through that, um, I started doing lots of seminars around the country. And at that stage, I was sponsored by Kodak, and Kodak used to um, give us the venue for free and provide lunch for free and all of that mm -hmm. so we could educate uh, professional photographers. And so when I left the studio or, or gave the studio away, it was a natural thing just to slide into coaching, mm. um, which, as I say, it's been 10 years now. So and I've, I've, I don't... Um, I've always seen myself as a business person, not as a photographer. The photographer, the camera is just a tool uh, to make money, basically. Yeah, the, that, that's often, I think, the thing that um, that people miss in business, isn't it, is that aptitude for business. I mean, I, I know yeah. I myself, I started photography and I wanted to be a photographer because I loved taking photos. I think a lot of us miss that actually there's a whole world of things going on when you've yeah. not got that camera in your hand that you also yeah. need to be really on the ball with. Yeah, it's very interesting. I was never a really good photographer, but I knew how to take photographs that people would buy. Mm -hmm. And that's what I teach. Even a lot of the experienced clients I have, there's things I see that I know people wouldn't buy that. So we work on the premises of the old style professional photographer, meaning professional. I get paid for it. Mm. I get paid for it, professional. Mm. And in my role as, as that photographer, professional photographer all the years, I've photographed lots of things for money. Mm -hmm. I dread to think. Only, <laughs> <laughs> and that's the only reason I photograph, mm -hmm. because I got paid for it. So, yeah, the business world is the most exciting world to me. The marketing's great, but the business, um, I'm not a photography seminar person. I read seminars I've been to a lot of them I was in Nashville two years ago at PP of A and WPPI I've been in Vegas two or three times but I'm not that type of person I yeah. find that boring mm -hmm. take me to a business expo lasting three days or three months and I will take all that information with me and I won't sleep I'm so excited about it so and I'm going to recommend maybe the photographers out there or some of them that of getting a little bit lost in the photography mm. get into business don't go to photography seminars quite so much maybe look at going to business ones mm. read business books read marketing books it's not the it's not being a good photographer that will make you successful some of the most successful photographers you probably know this too sally are not very good photographers but mm. they're they're amazing. Really business good people. business people and great marketers. So that's where your head should get. And that's what I've always loved as not even a passion, an obsession. I am obsessive with it. I can't stop talking about it. I froth at the mouth like I'm starting to now. It's just something that drives me and always has. So, yes. yeah, so after the studio, it was natural to start coaching and that, that was quite exciting. Again, a new journey. Mm. What what kind of made you take that step? I know you say, it, you know, it felt natural to you. Was mm. there something, you know, a marked event that you thought, okay, now is it's the time to kind of step away from the studio and what sparked that you wanted to pass all that knowledge onto other photographers? Yeah, I did it for selfish reasons, because it wasn't so much passing information to photographers, it was it gave me a buzz. Mm. So presenting a seminar always, you know, was very exciting for me. I went into a zone yeah. and uh, I loved the challenge. 
I had to get everything right. I'd practice. Um, I, I'd get all my notes together and everything. So it was just a drive. I loved it. I had to buy a, a, a new tie at each place I went to and that I wore that. I wore a suit and tie for the first half and then the second half I was a bit more casual. So I was the business person at the beginning and then I was the more casual sort of photographer in the afternoon. So I love that. But that's that's why I did it. I'm sorry uh, if that's the wrong answer. I didn't no, do there really is no wrong educate answer. photographers, but um, that came as well. And so, but the, the the way I ran my business again was a little bit different. I, if I'm sure a lot of people have read M Michael Gerber's The E Myth, right? The E Myth is the ultimate book on small business. Have you read it, Sally? Did you, did I have, you understand yeah, the quite message? some years ago now, but I, I could probably okay. do it in refresh, to be honest. The, the message was simple. His, his, um, the message in the book is build your business so you can sell it. Mm -hmm. It's not though you will, but build your business so it's saleable. Yeah. And to be saleable, it has to have an instruction manual. So if someone comes along and wants to buy it, if you want to charge top price, you say, well, these, this is the marketing we do. Here's all the marketing we do all laid out in the manual. This is how we do it. These are our returns. This is our average sale. This is how we do the follow-up phone calls, et cetera. And I built that man manual in my business. Mm -hmm. So when I left my business, I'd got this manual, which was no good to me. So I sort of took that as my coaching so I do things in a specific way right so it, it's my way <laughs> my methodology my marking my follow-up my style of photography etc cetera, etc cetera, yeah uh, without compromise mm -hmm. I love that that's so, it's great to be able to you know for photographers that want to come to you and say look Bernie I need help I don't know where I'm up to I want to push my business forward or I'm a brand new photographer and I don't know where to start. That methodology is concrete, isn't it? There's, you know, there's step by step all the way through, which I think for a lot of people that gives them some sense of security and they know exactly where they're up to. The only problem is they have to do it. Exactly. <laughs> That's the hard part, right? That's the hard part. <laughs> I can't do it. I'm only the teacher. I'm the coach. But when the, the team goes out to play, they have to have the right mindset. The coach can help with that. They have to have the right fitness. They have to practice. They have to have all of that. So um, that's what a coach does. He gets the best out of his players. And, uh, and that's all I try and do in my coaching, get the best out of the photographer, because we don't know the potential. We don't know what people's potentials are. And that's exciting. The exciting part of coaching is, is that's what it's about. We, we don't know what's inside of people. We have to draw it out. Yeah. And everyone's different, I guess. You know, each person. Everyone is totally different. different. Uh, we are affected by the way we're brought up. I was brought up, um, you know, in a, in a council house there in jolly old England, and we paid five pound a week. Um, but, and, you know, all my clothes were bought on what we call then the never never which is mm -hmm. i think a penny a week for my school uniform but we all those things affect us or affect some more than others mm. but it didn't affect me quite so much all i knew is i i was i set a goal uh, to be a successful photographer and to see the world i wrote it down and i achieved that very very quickly Absolutely. What a career you've had, you know, a journey in life. is It sounds phenomenal. Yeah, the good thing about photography is um, it can lead you anywhere. It, it's taken me around the world. You know, I was working on the ship. I was getting free accommodation. I had my own cabin. I was chief photographer. I had three photographers under me. I'm traveling around the world. I get to go on all the tours for free. Um, I get a percent of the total take. So I learned about selling um, and life was good. Yeah, absolutely. It still is. I know, Bernie, that one of the topics that you really enjoy speaking about is, 
you know, photographers separating themselves in the yeah, market and totally. you know, really making themselves stand out. Can you kind of delve a little bit deeper into that with us today? Let's talk about, you know, what that means, how photographers can do yeah. that. Yeah, you're, you're right. I do get excited about <laughs> this because I, I got very frustrated probably two or three years ago. You know, I think of my career and I think of the products I was producing, how I was getting the, the, the products and all of that. And I, mm. and I see photographers, and for me, they're all the same. They're just all the same. Why is that? We're like, photographers are like sheep. They all <laughs> follow one another. They all do the same thing, right? They all have the bio, and I read your Sally, I know you're married to Mark, and you've got a couple of dogs and that. But so is everybody else. Yeah. Someone else likes wine and chocolate. Someone else, you know, likes walking barefoot on the sand. That's not where I come from. I come from the reality of business. People don't care about you. They only care about themselves, what's in it for them. So we have to project ourselves as a different, and we can do that very simply. And there's a good example that we've done recently, and I've always believed in a one-page website. Mm -hmm. One-page website. We don't need much information we just need to give people who look at us a little tour of us a little bit they get a feel of what we're about are we expensive are we cheap what products do we sell whatever so we put one of these together recently and i'll <clears throat> i could send you the link it's it's one of my clients oliver yeah, jones in cardiff who's fantastic we can link to that um, in the uh, in the blog post yeah yeah but you won't see an about me with Oliver. You won't, you'll see very little about Oliver. You'll mm. just see the business. So it's like looking in the window. Um, so that's sort of one thing. Um, but that's the good news. The good news is because all photographers are the same, that means it's easier to step away from them. Mm. So in my business, yeah. when photographers zig, die, zagged, when they zag, die, zigged. Mm -hmm. And it's very easy to do. Just do the opposite of what your competition is doing. Mm. Can, you, can you give us some examples of that? So, you know, let's say I came to you and um, I'm very much um, round peg in a round hole. I'm doing all the same things as everybody else is doing. And I want to freshen up my business. So I feel like it's gone stagnant. What can I do as an example, perhaps, to make myself... Is your better? business stagnant? I'm saying perhaps or if, 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 you, if that was the situation. Or have you started off or aren't you making enough money or whatever? <laughs> I'll just tell you some examples, right, and where I come from, because it's very black and white. And that's a pun, because we only do black and white. Mm -hmm. That's the first step. If you work with me, I don't care what you're doing now, but you'll have to start just doing black and white. Mm -hmm. All right? That's the first step. And I'll tell you where that revelation came from. After spending 20 or 30 years in business, I did, you know, thousands of portrait shoots. I did thousands of portrait sales, did thousands of weddings, and had a very successful business. But I got tired of it. It was the same old, same old. So I decided to retire. And my wife, Wendy, said to me, no, you can't because I married you for breakfast, not for lunch and dinner. <laughs> so, so I went back with a different mindset. I thought, I'm sick of this color stuff, calibration. What the hell is this spider I bought to calibrate my screen so it'll match the lab's screen or whatever? I don't want that. I'm going to do black and white. I'm going to be very raw. My black and white's going to look, there's not going to be much gray in my black and white. Forget the grayscale. This is black and white. Mm. So my, I had a whole new attitude. So I went back and I thought, who am I? At that time, I was being challenged by a lot of younger, uh, attractive women like yourself coming along and were a threat to me because it was mainly a male-dominated industry. Mm. Um, female photographers were coming into weddings, which scared me as well. Mm. So I thought, who am I? So I decided I was getting old and grumpy. <laughs> um, I decided if I was in the medical industry, I'd be a mister, which means I'd be very experienced and a specialist. Mm. 
So I decided from that day I'd do black and white. So it also made it easy for me to tell any potential clients what I do on the phone or anytime. I could say to them, I specialize in black and white wall portraiture. Mm -hmm. End of story. Who's got a tagline they can put together that explains exactly what they're about? Mm. And that's what I was about. Black and white, I specialize in black and white wall portraiture. Did you ever get any um, any kickback from clients where they'd say, you know, oh, black and white, you know, I, I, I didn't just want that or, you know, how did how did you market yourself so that that conversation necessarily didn't have to happen? Well, this is the difference, isn't it? It's where you go off on that tangent of trying to please all of the people. Mm. You know, you you grab your marketplace and then you tell people what you do and they come to you for what you do, mm. not what you don't do yeah. or not what you could do. And I think that's um, a, a perception and a myth that's out there that you, you try and please all of the people. You can't. You can't. So you put yourself there, this is what you do, and then you tell people what you do and then they make the choice. But what I found was interesting. I didn't know what would happen, but what I found was I got a lot more respect. People like black and white. They said, oh, yeah, we like black and white. I said, yeah, it's great, isn't it? It's timeless. It doesn't conflict with any colouring that you've got around it when you've got on the wall. It's actually more flattering as well for older people and so on. So there were many, uh, oh, it's very art-like. It's a little bit arty. Mm. So they say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what we find now. So with all of my clients, we only do black and white. I love that. I, do you know, I absolutely love a black and white photo, especially there you, know, you go. I do weddings. There you go. I love, I love black and white. It, there's something just so simple about yes. it that makes it so and arty. You can't, I find it hot. Well, that's another topic. We may come back to that. But the thing is, with black and white, so what do other photographers do? Portrait photographers sell canvases, matted frame prints. What else do they sell? Um, um, <laughs> metal, you name it. <laughs> metal, uh, uh, books, uh, albums. We don't do that. My clients don't do that. We do wall art in acrylic in two different finishes, framed or unframed. We do uh, portrait boxes. We sell files, and that's it, really. What else Simple. does anybody need? What do you need? I love that. Fantastic. So what would you say are the benefits of a photographer, you know, having this process of stepping away from the norm? things, yeah. The benefits are enormous. Because to give an example, one of the earlier clients that I took to black and white, he said now he feels he's different than everyone else. And he's got rid of 80% of his competition. Mm -hmm. So he's got more confidence to put his prices up yeah. because he's a specialist. Mm. And so everything on the wall is black and white. No colour will is shown. So do you advise the photographers that you're mentoring? Do they go 100% black and white? That's all they do? Of course, yes. Why would you go halfway? It's quite a, um, a shift for people, isn't it? Um. There's a lot of shifts. There's a lot of shifts. There's a lot of shifts photographers need, obviously, to be successful. Mm. You know, you can either do it as a hobby, a half hobby, a semi hobby, or you can do it as a, a real thing, as I say, whether you go from passionate to obsessive. And they say what the place you should sit is passionate, close to obsessive. Mm. So, and that's the exciting. Thing, you know, you've got to have a natural drive. Yeah. You got to push through getting out of that comfort zone. Mm, absolutely. Because I'm just a big believer in that, um, you know, you your success lives just outside of your comfort zone. That's yeah. where all successes lie. Absolutely. You've got to do the things you don't want to do. You've got to eat that frog, right? Do the things you don't want to do first and then get on with the rest. Yeah, definitely. It's the, it's that stumbling block, isn't it? If you can get over that, you know, the bits that you really aren't looking forward to. I guess everybody has them in day-to-day -day life. We have jobs yeah. that we don't want to do that we put off to yeah. the 
day if you can get them done the feeling you have afterwards is always so much better isn't it what do photographers like doing most taking photos and then what next then they like to play with their photos don't yeah. they? they like to yeah. polish their images look at them do whatever spend hours doing that well you don't have to do that mm. that's not part of a business yeah that's part of playing that's a, <laughs> something you can outsource Mm. Yeah, definitely. and everything you can outsource because as I said in Michael Gerber's book build a business that you can sell yeah. what it means is but also you've got a business that you don't have to work in mm. and it works for you whether you're there or not and I built a business like that but I decided to stay in it mm. I didn't have to so, and that's what I've got with some of my clients. We've got one client who's just opened a second studio. Um, one client, two clients, who, three clients who've just put on other photographers. So now we find they find themselves going on holiday and still turning over heaps of money while they're away. So that's it's sort great. of like passive, yeah, it's passive income. Yeah. It's, but it's all possible. That's what I'm saying. It's all about systems and processes and simplicity. Mm. I can give you the perfect example of one of my clients wow. who's taken it to the different level. Mm -hmm. And this has blown me away as well. So when they approached me for coaching, they've been three, four years doing the fine art thing, doing the big canvas painterly look with a big gold frame. Mm. And they were getting good average sales, like five to eight, nine thousand, but they're only doing one or two a month. Mm -hmm. Ten thousand dollars a month is nothing. Mm -hmm. So we put them on, I put them on my program. So all that went bang, gone. Color gone, black and white only. No big fancy frames anymore, acrylic. Mm -hmm. We revamped the studio. An introverted photographer who didn't want to do selling. So I said, "You've got to do. You've got to do the in-person sales." She said, "I don't want to. Do I've got this lady that can do it and on, on Zoom." And this is going back two years or more. Mm -hmm. So I said, "All right, let's see how she goes." It worked out brilliantly. Doing her sales, so that she doesn't do any in-person sales. She only shoots. Mm -hmm. All the sales is done via Zoom with this lady. And uh, Jen has just put on this other photographer as well, so she can do more sessions. Mm -hmm. And she outsources her files, and that's it. And the incredible growth in that studio in 15 months, which you'll see in that brochure, because Jen's in Texas where we're having the conference mm -hmm. next year, turning over a million dollars in 15 months. Wow. Goodness. Staggering, isn't it? And yeah. this is all about the journey. Isn't it exciting when you go on the journey? Because we don't know. All I can do is put photographers on a journey. Yeah. And we put on our journey and just magical. And she's just one example. Um, you know, I see a lot of photographers talking stuff, this and stuff that. All I know is this, I've got clients who can turn over 50,000 a month with just themselves and maybe outsource the files and that's it. Mm. That's massive, isn't it? That's massive. Unfathomable yeah. in, a, in a way. <laughs> yeah, it is, but it can be done because we're doing it and it's all about simplification. Mm. The other thing about Jen, she's drop shipping all the work. So people don't come back to a studio to pick it up. It's delivered to the door. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we take people that are ready and will work hard for it to become general managers mm. or CEOs of a company, not a photographer anymore. Yeah. It depends on the want. So how can, I, how can photographers that are, you know, let's say that they're going through this transition of, you know, making themselves stand out, becoming that CEO rather than the person that's there doing Groundhog Day every day. 
Yeah. How how can they run that su- successful business and then still have the downtime, still have time to step away? Is that all part of the process? Yeah. Well, if you outsource things and you you build this business, a business is a real business. I went to a seminar years ago, a, a business seminar, and the guy came up to lunchtime. He said, I want you to go at lunchtime and phone your business. And whoever picks up the phone, tell them you're going away for three months and see what they say. And I had a mate of mine with me who was a wedding portrait photographer, and he did that. He phoned up his studio and he said, I'm going away for three months. And the girl on the phone said, yeah, that's fine. When, you know, that's it. Mm-hmm. You, then you've got a business. It shouldn't rely on you. Mm-hmm. If, you're not, if you can't step out of the business, you've got to work hard. So you can more and more step out of the business because otherwise it's a job, right? Yeah. You create your own job. You're your own boss. So in terms of being a wedding photographer then, how does that work for wedding photographers? So, uh, you know, a lot of them out there will be shooting themselves and then they may outsource their images, their marketing, yeah. their social media. You know, I think that's quite, it's becoming more popular now to, to outsource, isn't it? Yes. You that time freedom back. So are you saying that, you know, you start to build a team under you to go out and shoot those weddings for you? Well, everybody's aware of this. My first advice, if you want to make money, is don't do wedding photography. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. Yeah. Because I've done all the, you can do all the analysis and I've got it there. It, It takes three times as long when if you're doing, got a portrait business, you, you you know if even if you get an average of one to say to two thousand pounds or dollars a week doesn't matter you do thirty of those a month that's thirty thousand a month yeah. that's over three hundred thousand a year that's it could give you a comfortable living um, you can lease your own studio for that and you can do that with just you so we can scale up with a portrait business right. Mm. which is what we do. So you reach a level where you can say, okay, we're, we're running comfortably now. We've got 50,000 a month every month. We're getting all the sessions. We're getting 30 sessions at, you know, 1,500 average. It's going along beautifully. The graph's very level. We can scale. So we have a choice. How do we scale? Well, in one of my clients, uh, we said, all right, let's open another studio, a two-and-a-half-hour drive away. Mm-hmm. So then you implement everything else from the studio that's running so smoothly, take it all there. So that's what he's doing to scale. And he's looking at, you know, four or five studios is what he wants in different states. Amazing. So how can you do that with wedding photography? Very hard yeah. because of all the work in my business. And we did 176 was the best year for weddings we did in one year. So I had four other photographers, but I had very good systems. Mm. That was the point. It ran ran smoothly, but very hard to scale. And it's hard to scale because getting the weddings is hard. The weddings have slowly been dying for years, the the wedding industry. Mm. I mean, if you're new to the industry, you don't know, right? But if you were there 15 years ago, you know everything is getting harder as well Mm. because of the competition, because of the prices. It's very price competitive. It's so freaking time consuming. It's very stressful. Um, What other reasons? It's a commitment. Imagine making a commitment nine months from now on this Saturday at this time, you have to be there. That's pressure, isn't it? Mm. That's okay as long as you get paid well. Yeah. Very well. Mm. The good thing well, was... Even more in advance than that. You know, it can be two years, three years in advance now, can't it? Yeah. And what can happen in that time? Anything. I'm sure, you know, um, there's so many stories of wedding photographers, and I've got good ones too, but it's so much pressure. It's... Besides time, weather, 
freaky people, <laughs> all of that producing. What changed dramatically, of course, was when we went from film to digital. Mm. And it took me two years to make that transformation. And the reason was I wanted to wait for a, a good camera to come out because the early ones, there was so much involved in yeah, Photoshop know. afterwards. They just weren't very good quality. So um, the transition was with film, everybody had an album. Right, that was easy. And we had a great upsell system. Mm. So I meant I could take someone that booked in for nineteen hundred dollars to my average was six and a half thousand. So I could lift them from there right up there. And with my other photographers, it was four and a half thousand. Mm -hmm. So I did have a business I could scale, but at the same time, I was doing heaps of portraits as well. Mm. But that's the problem with weddings. It's very hard to scale when you're just shooting digitals. Yeah. And that's when I got a bit sick of the whole thing. Like I'd done so many weddings, I felt I could just send my camera on its own. It would know what to do. It didn't need me. <laughs> and I, I didn't that's work very hard because <laughs> I didn't care. I just didn't care. How many images does a bride want? I asked one photographer a few months ago, how many images take at a wedding? He said, 10,000. I said, what? I said, why? <laughs> he said, well, they're walking down the aisle and I put it on burst. And it goes. Trrr! Yeah. <laughs> um, where's the art gone? There isn't any. It's, and I asked another photographer, so why do you take so many? He said, to make sure I get some good ones. Where's the art gone? Yeah. Where's the learning gone? It's gone. Where's the teaching, lighting, and about taking the right photographs, the saleable photos, and all of that. But that's just me getting on my high horse because I've experienced what how good it was in the past, you know, yeah. with education and what the education is now. Yeah, you've seen the very confused, very confused. Circle, haven't you? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so I'm much happier in this portrait place where we concentrate on lighting. We, we, what I call real photographers, real old photographers, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we focus on, on, on so few things so we don't get distracted. Yeah. And our customers come to us for what we do. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So Obviously, I mean, we've we've talked in in vast memories about, you know, your career and your experience over the years and, you know, how you've always been in this industry. Is there anything that sticks out for you as a really memorable moment in your career? I've had lots. I've had heaps. I mean, I've had a, a fantastic life because I've been a photographer. Mm. Um, I think it's... It's a fantastic um, career to pursue um, because you get to meet people, you get to go to nice places, especially with my wedding photography. You know, you go to some of the beautiful five-star venues. Um, it, it's great. Um, so I've had just a, a great, a great career. Yeah. Is there anything specifically, you know, perhaps when you when you sold the studio or you gave the studio away and, and moved into coaching, has there been anything within your coaching career? And did you say the last 10 years you've been coaching? Yes. Yeah. Is there any particular client that stands out for you? Any story that, you know, for good or bad, anything that's, you know, really stood out and stuck with you over the years? I just think the progress I've seen at my um, success as a coach has grown and that's all you want to see. And seeing these clients achieve these things they never thought they'd achieve. Yeah. They never thought that they'd get anywhere like that. Mm -hmm. that's, that that's just fantastic. And as a photographer, you want that too. You always want to see growth. Yeah. And, and, and growth in yourself, growth in your processes, and uh, and all of that. But yeah, I I'm just a big fan of portraits uh, and not weddings because I know what they're like. Uh, it, it, it's too hard to make money. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. um, and scale. That's the important thing. You've yeah. got to be able to scale up. 
Absolutely. So, I mean, Bernie, you're obviously a very inspirational man. You've seen it all in the industry. You've been through it all firsthand. Is there anyone that still inspires you that you can share some information with to our listeners? As a photographer or as a person or as a a writer? Anybody at all. Someone that kind of springs to mind when I ask you that question. Yeah, actually, my clients who get so much success, Mm-hmm. Um, the the one photographer who inspires it, me is one of my clients, Richard Hill, mm-hmm. and Richard just does amazing work. He's he's way above sort of in what he does, and he's 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 that sort of person. And he studies photography. He's, he's got books on all the great photographers over the years. Yeah. Um, and and he, he sort of he was a, a salesperson, and and uh, when I started uh, coaching him, and uh, he's he's in, he's very inspirational in the photography part. Mm-hmm. But there's been many people. I mean, I read a lot of a lot of books. I made a note of some. I thought you might ask me that, that <laughs> question. I've made a note of some of the books that I've. I've been reading if only I could find all my copious notes um are, uh, about great, what they awesome. were there are but great one... information aren't they for people you know I think that I mean as as you know I'm I'm 29 and I think I don't read as often as I probably should do and I think that's kind of something maybe in my generation a little bit is that we're so yeah. technology orientated now that actually we forget you know just sitting there with a good book and learning yeah. something is invaluable yeah. yeah well it is with your business and your business mindset mm. one of the good ones I've got recently and about you know positioning yourself it's called positioning mm. and it's a great book in positioning yourself in the marketplace the other probably the best book I've come across recently was by a guy called Andrew Griffiths and he's no relation just happens to have the same surname and it's called someone has to be the most expensive why not you and that I can recommend you've got to get that you've got to read it because it explains why you can set off to be the best right why shouldn't you be the best is the question he's asking and of course the purple cow by Seth Godin everybody knows that book Mm-hmm. If you haven't read that, the first time I read that, I, that just stood out like, wow, that's exactly what I'm about. Be a purple cow. Mm-hmm. But he gives the warning in that, that other purple cows will appear. So you all, you have to then have a yellow cow type of thing. And the e which, which I've mentioned by Michael Gerber, but those, those are probably the top four books I'd recommend to be read from cover to cover. Amazing. Um, There's a couple because that they're I inspirational. So I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll the, definitely jump on those. Yeah, they're inspirational. And you, you just have to do this. As you said, Sally, you've got to be committed. You've got to learn. You've got to sit down and write a book. You can't just, you know, it's serious. Mm. When you get in that serious stage, when you commit to a studio lease, that's serious. Mm. That's that's you're you're starting to be a real business person, then aren't you? Because Absolutely. you've got that commitment. Yeah. So you, you, your motivation is a bit stronger. So you have to really sit down and, and get your act together. It's that fight it, or flight mode, isn't it? You know, you you either drown in it or you soar. And you know, it's I think some people have to have that um, that mode, if you like, ignited in them to really go for it. Yeah, I don't believe everyone can succeed. I, I'm not a believer in that. I, I don't think that everybody's made yeah. to succeed in business. Um, I've seen people fail, um, of course. I've yeah. seen people fail for reasons that it wasn't, you know, the drive wasn't there. It has to be incredible drive. Yeah. It has to be just you lose sleep over thinking about not the worrying thing, not putting out fires all the time, but how are you going to progress your business? How are you going to, what new thing are you going to come up with? What new product are you going to get on your walls? What your prices, you know, they should be reviewed 
regularly. And I don't mean every six months. I mean, you know, at least monthly, we revise all my clients' prices and put them up certain areas and strategize everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's so exciting, I think, business. I just I just love it. I can't help it. We definitely got that feeling today too. <laughs> oh, well, when I start speaking a lot quicker and my voice goes up and I start, as I say, <laughs> frothing at the mouth, I'm, there's got to be a base. There's got to be a starting point. There's got to be an instruction book. There's got to be a methodology. And our methodology is very simple. It's simple. It's 90% Facebook ads. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of people out there saying, I tried it, didn't work. Yeah. Of course it didn't. You can't just try it. You have to work at it. We've worked at it. I've worked at it for 10 years to get me where, or five, to get me where we are now with our method, mm-hmm. with the ad, with, you know, our analytics, um, our benchmark numbers. Mm-hmm. So it's, t- and, and isn't it incredible You've got to find this incredible. That, that client I spoke about with a million dollar turnover, all her work comes from Facebook ads. Really? All come from Facebook ads. That's so I know it works. Mm. I know it works. <laughs> I, know, I know it works for others, but you have to have a methodology. You have to have a way. That's you know. It. And you have to force yourself through out of that comfort zone. I remember many years ago, I I had this fear of heights, right? I still got fear of heights, but, and I'd been on a helicopter over at the Pulco taking photos, a bit in a a small Cessna with the door off so I could take aerial photos. Looking through the camera, I was fine, but as soon as I put the camera down and looked down, I was like petrified. Yeah this fear of heights and you know they say to overcome your fear do what you fear Mm -hmm. so i decided to do a couple of parachute jumps oh my goodness so (laughs) from a static line so this wasn't hanging on to a guy or anything this was you jumped out of the plane on your own which was attached to a line and it pulled open the chute and the chute opened well we learned a lot on that weekend right we learned that you had 10 seconds to pull your reserve chute, otherwise the ground would stop you. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but it was funny because we, I did my, my first jump, and when you come down, you flare, so it's like putting the brakes on and your thumbs are pointing to the ground, and I, I flared too late and my thumbs hit the ground, and, boy, I broke one of them, but I was okay. Oh, my gosh. And then came back a few weeks later to my second jump, trying to kill myself for the second time. And then we see this parachute coming down in a break and it's spinning, you know, we we thought, oh, that's an instructor showing off. And then there's an instructor next to me and he said, silly idiot, he should have pulled the reserve chute earlier. His his actual first chute had tangled. So that's when you have to, but you train for it. That's the point. And that, that's what I think in business. Maybe photographers don't do enough. Put in the training. Put in the effort. Do the role playing with your phone calls. Do the role playing with your wedding interviews. We used to do it all the time. We used to hide a tape in the interview room and tape the interviews with couples. Why did we do this? Because we play back the tape to listen to what we'd said to them. Mm to make sure that we could do it better next time. Yeah. And then we got so confident, we didn't have to hide it anymore. We just put it out there and say, hey, do you mind if I record this just to make sure I give you all the information? Say, yeah, sure. And then we play it back. Or if I was training someone, that was important I had that. So I could listen to it and say, hey, Jenny, you see where you said, yeah, I shouldn't have said that, should I? No, Jenny, next time, say this. Mm. All about training, all about you know, learning people's body language, all about role-playing your selling as well. Mm. Um, You know, you do some selling with portraits with your friends, go through the process, which we do, Um, even with Zoom sales, um, which is now obviously an accepted form of of selling. Yeah. Zoom selling 
I've been blown away. You know, the biggest right. sale we did via Zoom with one of my clients, $18,000. Wow. That was via Zoom. Theme, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, but that's about getting the right clients, right? That mm-hmm. client was hot, right? But it was still done via Zoom, which is amazing. Mm. Well, you know, in Australia, they were selling houses via Zoom. Mm-hmm. Million dollar houses. Yeah. But people hadn't even visited the house because of the pandemic. Yeah. Crazy, right? <laughs> the world we live in now, Bernie. <laughs> it's different, yeah. It'll never be normal, but it'll be it'll be good. We've learned a lot through the pandemic, right? We've learned how to do things easier, simpler. Definitely. Keep it keep it all simple. So they are exciting times. I think these are the best times. Yeah, for sure. In all the times, more opportunity now than ever. Yeah, absolutely. If you could start your career all over again, is there anything you changed? Any any knowledge you can impart for our listeners that you know? Oh, I I do this differently. Yeah, basically, I get studio ninja. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, it wasn't around when I needed it. Right. <laughs> so. Studio Ninja would have been a beautiful thing in my business. I had it, beautiful systems. They were all on paper and a little bit of computer, but mainly paper systems. Yeah. But being able to have it on computer and be able to share it with my staff would have made it a lot, uh, a lot easier, right? Yeah, so if I've got a regret, maybe it's that I didn't have that. Uh-huh. But I didn't have a choice. He, sh- he should have started so much sooner, shouldn't he? <laughs> yeah, well, Chris isn't old enough to start <laughs> any earlier. He had to go through his own experiences as well he did. Uh, that have taken him to this point. So, so that's good. But I think um, you just have to do it. And there's a great quote that I posted in my Facebook page today. Um, and it was talking about, success you know for me when someone's very successful that's a dangerous period right Mm -hmm. you know if you're booking weddings like crazy and and that and everything's working it's very dangerous because it won't keep going Mm. it's just the fact of life and I read in this article about blockbuster if you can remember that I do if you remember 2004, that's great. <laughs> uh, they had 9,000 rental stores and employed 84,000 people, right? Oh. And th- they raked in 800 million in late fees. These people were late bringing the video, but 800 mm-hmm. million. Yeah. So they had a pretty, a pretty good business model, right? But then along came Netflix and, and they didn't know what to they thought, oh, no, that, that won't last. That's just won't last. So what happened? Blockbuster went bankrupt to the tune of 800 million, whatever. Netflix is now massive. Mm. And what they did, of course, they started not just the video streaming, but now they put actors into work and, and do their own productions. Yeah, yeah. And then they've been followed by others. So that's the thing you have to be careful of with success that you've always got to be searching and the comment that I liked about the article was Jeff Bezos summed it by saying you know if you're going to take bold bets they've got to be experiments so if they're experiments you don't know ahead of time whether they're going to work Mm. and by their nature they're prone to failure, but a few big successes compensate for dozens and dozens of things that don't work. And that's what photographers should remember in business. You've always got to be testing and measuring. I use test and measure about 50 times a week when I'm speaking to my clients. It's all test and measure. You have to be constantly doing that, although this is working great. We've got a system working great, right, to get leads, to convert them, yeah. And to make great sales, but I'm not happy. I want something here that we're testing, that we're experimenting, because yeah. if this falls over, we've got to have something to go towards. Yeah. So that's the thing. But 
I suppose photographers get a bit, you know, overwhelmed in what they're doing. They get really deep into themselves in a zone and they lose the testing bit. Yeah, it can be difficult sometimes, can't it? Like you mean you're focusing on the good. Yeah, it's so hard. If, if the last 18 months has taught us all anything, it's sometimes you always need a plan B. You know, you need, if something fails, you need something to fall back on. And so many photographers all over the world, you know, COVID struck and their income just disappeared. Yeah, and there's nothing you can do. It's out of your control. Mm. So you talked about, and I think separation is very important. In my own wedding business, um, we shot Hasselblad, which was square, so we used medium format. But I wasn't just happy with that. We needed something else, another edge. So um, Hasselblad made the X-Pan, which was a panoramic camera. It, it was two 35 mil frames together. So I bought four of those and my other, I got my other photographers to take black and white um, some of these panoramic things and we incorporated them in the album. So they were the point of difference as well. And we had a big one on the wall, panoramic taken of a wedding. So I was looking for some edge. What makes you different? Yeah, I love that. If our listeners would like to find out more about you, Bernie, get in touch, have a chat with you, how can they do that? All on the website, just BernieGriffiths.com. Amazing. That's fantastic. It's as sim simple as that. And uh, we hope uh, that Studio Ninja will promote uh, our uh, upcoming conference in Texas. Hope to see you there, Sally. Absolutely. It'll be really yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, have to make, uh, I'll have to make the flight. I've never been to Texas, so maybe now's the time. <laughs> Well, neither, neither have I, but uh, it sounds amazing. We'll be in Lockhart, which is the centre of the barbecues, and uh, I've got a lot of clients there, so we're looking forward to it. We've got this great programme, and we're really, really pumped. Oh, I can't wait. It sounds exciting, Bernie. Thank you so much for joining me today. I've loved hearing about your career and the things that you've learned and the information that you've passed on to the listeners today has been incredible, so thank you so much. Yeah, that's that's a pleasure. I could keep talking for the next 12, 14 oh. hours. So. <laughs> we'll have to do another episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Great talking to you, Sally, as well. Thanks again, Benny. See you soon. All right. Bye, Bye. for now. Okay, guys, that's everything from me today. Thank you so much again to Bernie for joining us on the show and imparting all of his knowledge over his vast career in photography. I learnt loads. I hope you guys did too. And it was such a refreshing take on being a photographer. I mean, black and white images, crazy. So if you would like to see the show notes, you can head to www.studioninja.co forward slash episode 44. Please don't forget to rate us on the podcast platform that you're listening on. A little bit of love goes a very long way. I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to this episode of NinjaCast brought to you by Studio Ninja. Beautifully designed and super easy to use, Studio Ninja will help you manage your leads, clients, shoots, invoices, contracts, workflows, and so much more. To learn more or start your 30-day free trial, go to www.studioninja.co.